So I found a mold over here that hasn't been opened. It's still got the original bands around it. It also has two parts and both the parts haven't been opened. I'm really curious. So let's pull them both up this week. Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bulk lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. The tricky part of these unopened ones is I can't actually really gauge the volume because they're so stuck together and there's gonna be a bit of dirt and debris in them that I can't quite blow out. But let's just pour them up and see. Oh my gosh, that took way more. I'm thinking that this one's a spare one because I don't think, I don't know, it says lids and I would assume that each one will have a lid and this is just a spare one, but I'm gonna pour it up anyway. It's time to open. I'm not sure which one to open first. I think I'll do, oh, do I do the little one or do I do the big one? I'm gonna do the little one. I'll do the little one, because I feel like this is gonna be more of a shock than the top. At the moment, they look like little flowers. In there, they look like tiny little flowers. And it, oh, they're numbered. So there's one, two, three. These are a lot bigger than I thought they were going to be. I thought they were going to be tiny little like caps because of the hole, but they're a lot wider and broader. Oh my gosh, it's a tiny little pumpkin top. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. The lids alone would be so cute attached to stuff or on a mug or even a mug lid. Oh, a mug lid. Oh, <laughs> how cute is that? It's a mug lid. Oh my gosh. That's adorable. I am happy with the extra, I think it's a lid mold, another one. It's the exact same. It looks like it's the exact same. But I'm so happy because that can work so perfectly. That's so cute. Oh my gosh, I'm happy with that. You know what, I love pumpkin stuff. I think pumpkins should be a year round thing, not just a Halloween thing. I'm hoping that if that is a pumpkin lid, this is, these are pumpkins, and these are gonna be cute little pumpkin jars, but I'm hoping they don't have any other detail on them. Like I'm hoping they're plain pumpkins because I can add my own details to plain pumpkins. I can add my own faces and all of that. So if it does have details on it, I mean, it's not gonna be terrible, but I'll be not as excited. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I don't know if I like these. I don't know. I remember how we had those weird strawberry creature things with the faces. These are like the same thing. They are, <laughs> they are a pumpkin version. But the thing is the face is so pronounced. I can't even carve it off if I wanted a plain pumpkin. Although this one here is really cute. I really like that face and I feel like it's like, <laughs> like but the other ones just kind of feel like they've just had a really big feed and they're like, mm. I don't know what I'm going to do with these just yet. I think what I'm going to do is trim them up, have a think about it. I do know that I am going to paint those details on and just have a look and see how they feel. But yeah, I'm going to trim them up and see how they go, I guess. <laughs> The pieces were actually numbered one, two, three because each hat went with a different pumpkin as each one is a slightly different shape and sitting on a slightly different angle and so that the crevices will line up with the hat and base. I did actually have to trim the inner rim because some of them had become too thick. Uh, some of them I poured a bit too thin so the hats move around a little bit, especially on that one that leans, it sort of slides off a little bit, but I think it's kind of cute. It's like, whoop. 
Again, I'm not absolutely 100% in love with this piece because it does give that sort of edge on a bit of a creepier piece. It's actually because it gives me the uncanny valley effect and someone said that on the strawberry video and that is exactly why I don't like it and it just puts it in a perfect term. So if you don't know what the uncanny valley effect is, look it up, but it's just like an uncomfortable feeling over something that has a human-like aesthetic where it shouldn't have, but like not in a cutesy way, like in a weird way. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It just evokes a certain emotion out of me that is uncontrollable and it just makes me uncomfortable, okay? And I know some of you felt the same way about the strawberries. So I know I'm not alone and I'm sorry if you don't feel that way and you're really offended by that. I just can't help it. It just evokes something in me, but I just don't like it. <laughs> For these pumpkins, I wanted to bring to life some speckled looking pumpkin skin. So I didn't just want to do a plain orange pumpkin, but actually look into different species of them. I think that there are so many beautiful varieties of pumpkins out in the world that I feel like they, they deserve more appreciation, not just the orange. The oranges are really cool. And I really love the beautiful shapes and crevices that they all have, but there are so many colorful pumpkins and I just need them to have their time in the limelight because they are just so magical. I actually have loved these low fire glazes that Chrysanthos have offered for a very long time and I have always wanted to try them. So when I opened this, I knew I had to order. They're actually called fantasy glazes and they are a lower firing glaze. So this means that I'm firing these at a lower temperature to my usual work. So I had to do a separate firing to make these work within the schedule. So these fantasy glazes actually have little bits of crystals in them, which you'll see me mixing up the pots throughout this footage. And you can see that they've got like, it's like chunky. It, it actually kind of looks a bit like vomit, but it's fine. <laughs> They're a bit chunky. Uh, they got lumps and bumps all through them. And the idea is that these glazes, they sort of have like a color base. And then there's like these crystal like crystals, crystal like crystals, crystal like glass bits in the glaze. and these are essentially tiny bits of glass chunks that melt in the kiln but melt in the glaze making some really cool effects so they run and bleed and they are actually intended to craze so crazing is where your glaze crackles and creates these little yeah like little cracks within the glaze but it's actually a part of the feature and a part of the function and it just looks so mesmerizing it looks like you've just found this fantastic geode in a cave and I'm hoping it will give this sort of speckled texture and aesthetic that I'm hoping to achieve and bring to life these pumpkins in different shades of colors the one thing about this glaze is because it is low lower firing I'm not vitrifying this clay so it's not food safe um, and it's not particularly watertight, but it can hold wrapped candy sweets. I just thought that this was a good way to lean into the pumpkinness, but also play around with something new, show you a new product, and also me get to experiment with a new product as well and see how I like it. And I'm gonna show you a test tile as I'm painting them so that you know what color I'm actually painting to know what to expect. I have painted all the gloves and all the caps to kind of match into one of the colors in the actual crystal glaze. And then I added a lotion glaze over those bits, so the eyes, the mouth, and the gloves. I just gave sort of a couple mil clearance for those. I did learn a couple of things about these glazes that I wanna share with you just in case you're interested in trying them out. And that is, first, they are super thick and chunky. They were really fun to stir in the little tubs. They were like a little magic surprise potion in there and they did make a really crispy, crunchy noise. I did try and record a couple and you can hear the like crispiness but I did already mix all the crunchy good sounding ones so you'll just get the like not as good ones. <laughs> the second tip for applying the bigger the brush the better to an extent obviously the biggest brush you can use on the area you are going to apply the glaze to is because the bigger brush was better at picking up the chunks of crystal. The smaller brushes were really struggling to even hold the weight <laughs> on these little crystal shards and yeah it just was not applying it very well so the bigger the brush you can get away with the better and I just used a smaller brush to sort of line and outline there's areas like around that pumpkin cap 
the pumpkin stalk. I'm calling it a cap, but it's a stalk of the pumpkin stalk. The third tip for this glaze is to paint strategically. As the little crystals don't hold their permanent spot, they can actually brush off really easily, especially once the glaze is dried on the piece. You'll see some footage where I'm sort of moving them around without even meaning to move them around. Some of them are coming off. When you have the larger chunks, they could just flake off. This is just because they're so chunky and they're so heavy. Uh, you just want to be careful and just be aware of what your like what surface you're painting on that doesn't contaminate with another work that you're using but also to be strategic about how you paint it because you want to pop those large chunks where you're not going to touch it much even just for packing and moving it into the kiln i also tried by doing a light coat first of just the sort of like liquid part of the glaze and then i did the second and third coat where i added the chunks on top so that they would hold their spot because i noticed when you do multiple coats you start sort of brushing off the crystals when you're trying to like get the right number of coats because it needed like three coats to get a really good coverage but as for that i just let the chunks be really random if some of them were a bit close together i was just like whatever we're just gonna see what that looks like because i found that the ones that sort of clustered together are going to give me a cooler reaction in those spots and spreading them out also looks really cool but i was just kind of open to having a really fun surprise i am also going to show you at the end of the video when you see the results the before and after so that you can compare and see and visualize pretty much start to finish of how much they have transformed and I must say I'm glad for myself that I did that because there was a few pieces where I underappreciated the results but now looking back I'm like I, I see it I really like it now so yeah that's a little wrap up or overview of what I'm doing with this week's piece for the rest of the video uh, where I am glazing and you're seeing the colors go on and the different colors I picked out. I have some fun facts about pumpkins for you that are definitely not fact checked, although they were on Britannica. So I would assume that an encyclopedia would be pretty accurate and some of them were news articles as well. Here is your first pumpkin fact. I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna do three nice fun little bite size pumpkin seed size <laughs> fun facts for you to take away i shared these with my studio assistants this week and they thought they were great so i'm hoping <laughs> you think they're also great and i'm gonna keep telling them to people because i think they're great number one is there are over 150 different species of pumpkins and some even look like the results from this week's video and i didn't even really intend that i was just kind of going for magical weird inspired by pumpkin but then when i looked up all the different species of pumpkins i soon discovered that most of these glazes actually reflect real life and that was so cool to me so i hope that that brings a greater connection to these pieces at the end my second fun fact is i looked up the world record for the biggest pumpkin grown but we are so lucky because that was just broken recently like the start of this month a californian horticulture 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 i can never say that word horticulture teacher in california has now broken the biggest pumpkin world record and they grew a pumpkin that is 2749 pounds which converts to uh, 1247 kilograms which is essentially the same weight as a small car and i actually looked up a, some small car brands for you so that you can visualize it it's about a kia rio or about the same weight as a toyota corolla that is mind-blowing like how did they transport the pumpkin to be weighed did someone have to come out to the farm how did they do that i need to look into it because it's so fascinating to me and then like was it really dense because i guess like a car is kind of empty and it's all just like the mechanical parts that make it heavy is it actually quite small in actual size because it's just so freaking dense full of pumpkin goodness i don't know and it's, it's it blew my mind and i'm just like fascinated by this huge pumpkin i I haven't even seen the pumpkin. I need to look it up. You know what? I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna put a picture right here so that you can see it. 
Ah, amazing. Now, my third and final fun fact that you can share this Halloween is I looked up the jack o' lantern and why we carve out pumpkins. Because being Australian, I'm not too familiar with many Halloween traditions. So I wanted to know a bit about why pumpkins and why do we carve them. But from what I read on Britannica, is that jack o' lantern was originally a turnip. <laughs> How amazing! A turnip or a potato. And it actually originated in Ireland uh, because it was to ward off Jack's wandering soul. So there's a lot more detail about that and I would love to look more into that in my downtime. But the jack-o'-lantern was to ward off Jack's wandering soul. And I couldn't actually find when pumpkins actually started it sort of moved when the irish immigrants moved to the u.s they began carving jack-o'-lanterns from pumpkins because that was what was more native to the region over potatoes and turnips so that is why we do jack-o'-lanterns as pumpkins today so they are some pretty fun halloween pumpkin fun facts for you i hope you like them i popped these in the kiln i didn't need to glaze them because they already glazed pop them into the kiln and open it up to reveal these cuties. I have no expectations. All I'm hoping for, actually, I do have an expectation. I'm just hoping that we can see some magical glaze reactions happening on those pieces. I hope that they have kind of speckled. Let's hope nothing drastic has happened and we've had no drips or anything in the kiln, but otherwise I'm, I'm just excited to see what these look like. So let's have a look. Oh my goodness. Holy mackerel. They are really cool. I'm just in awe at how cool some of these look like They've all kind of like bubbled and speckled and they, they literally look like a fantasy dream. They are making this really cool pinging noise. And usually when I hear pinging, it's usually because of crazing. And on the bottle, it says it may craze. But yeah, really cool noises. <laughs> First glance, I really love this one over here, this brownie green. This blue looks a bit more muted than I thought it would. Oh, they're slippery. Oh, yeah, it has crazed a lot. I like it though. So that pinging noise, I feel like is that crazing happening as it's cooling down. Oh, I like it. Look at that. Look at all those little crackles. Wow. It's just so interesting to look at, isn't it? Ooh, I tied this color in very nicely. I had a look at the test tile online and hoped that that blue would come out and it has and it just it just fits in so nicely, doesn't it? Yeah, that's cool. That's spooky, but still fun. I feel like this could have had a few more reactions on it. It feels a bit orangey, like I could have just painted it with an orange glaze. Although these ones are quite great on this side. Wow, this one. Now, the other week I made those, I made the little owls with the shaving cream and they were giving gobstopper jawbreaker vibes but this this also gives that i feel like i can make these tiny little <laughs> jawbreaker ornaments or something out of that it's a bit plain for my liking this one i feel like it could have had a few more colors or even just a bit of a coloring to that white you know what it kind of works though because as i'm saying that i was gonna say that it looks like real ghosty like and i mean it's halloween that lid fits really well. I think that the glove color was a bit off. Maybe if I did red, it would feed into that red a bit more, but maybe it softens it down. I don't know. Ooh, I like that. I feel like this one could have been a bit thicker in the application because it is a bit, you can see it's a bit streaky, but it's kind of cool. Cause I guess like pumpkins are very textured and streaky. Wow, that's pretty cool. I like the crazing on this one as well. I like that the purple kind of has like a white dotty speckleness. It definitely gives like outer space Oh, it's just fun, isn't it? I know, maybe you're not vibing with this and you'd rather illustrative work, but I just find that the reaction part is so fun. It's like, oh, what am I gonna get? It's like a little surprise. It's just so cool to see it do interesting stuff, you know? Oh, wow, that was close. It didn't stick to the kiln, thank goodness. I need to check the other ones, actually, because maybe they've done that as well. Ooh, I like that one. I like that it's got, like, this kind of, like, greeny... Do you know what it reminds me of? Those little scientific, um... What are they? They're like bacteria plates. 
Wow, I really like this one. I feel like it would have been cool to do the top and the gloves as like a musty color, but I didn't know how this one was gonna react. So that's why I went for just purple. I love that it looks like it's got a snotty nose. Oh goodness. Ooh, that's very interesting. <laughs> wow, it kind of just looks like I splattered paint all over this and didn't have a real plan. I like how they've melted though. I feel like that's really cool. Yeah, that's quite sweet still. It's a very cool reaction, but I don't like this one as much as I thought I would. I thought I would have loved this one the most. That's pretty cool. I like the creasing through here. Really like the look of that. I've noticed that the glass, where the like little bits of, I think it is glass, the little bits of glass have reacted. That's where most of the creasing is which I think is really fun. People always ask me to use glass on my work and I haven't because I've been a bit too nervous to do that but these seeing that there was glass parts in this makes me want to try something maybe even doing a cone 04 again so that it doesn't melt too much i really love how much this one's crazed as well that is really cool look at all the little blue colors in that little speckles like even so these are the big chunks that have melted down but even the little tiny chunks that are just in that that give it a really cool speckled look oh that color is lovely it's like a cobalt blue yeah that one's cool i like how this color almost fits in so perfectly with those ones. Very crazed though. That one's probably the most crazed one we've got. And last one, which I think will be my favorite because I like the look of it the most. Wow. <laughs> That is my favorite. I love that one. I think because it's maybe a 70s-esque look. I love the top color, how it just complements this, but the yellow feeds into the yellow splotches on it. It's crazed a lot as well. But I, I just love it. It's so freckly. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, I love that one. I wish I could put this on a mug. Wow, definitely my favorite. I don't know, you might have a different favorite, but that one's definitely mine. Very fun experiment this week. Here are the finished results of all of those pumpkins up close and in detail so you can check them all out and maybe even fall in love with a couple of cuties. I actually love every single one of these. I think because for me, they are so fresh, so fun. The results were like expected, obviously, because you can see the test tiles, but also unexpected because you just don't know how that placement is going to look where the different things are going to react on the piece and how it's just going to feel as a piece in total until it comes out of the kiln. It was rather magical to have that experience and to also hear the little pinging and tinging of the little pieces in the kiln as the crazing sort of happened as they were cooling down. They actually kept pinging for a week a whole week after they came out of the kill like it was still happening i'm sure that as they age they'll get a few more pings in them when i opened the kiln i initially didn't love the white ones but now looking back at what they look like before and getting to see how cool those little spots of color are i really do have a new fond appreciation my favorites are still my favorites just because i just love the different colors and the little spots and the little reactions they are just so fun they actually kind of look like little petri dishes as well which is really cool I feel like you could play with that kind of aesthetic art wise it's not like super creative and inventive but for me as a potter and seeing the reactions and the excitement of being able to like apply heat to this object and have it literally transform was just so thrilling I just love this stuff I still think my favorite is the brownie one just because I love the contrast of that brown with the creamy yellow and the bright green I really like to just focus in on one thing per week because otherwise I just get overwhelmed I will be honest I want to do so many ideas Ideas with all the pieces I do but focusing on one result per week really just helps me to stay focused on each individual piece and it means that I can really dedicate my time to a certain technique or a certain idea and you guys can get a really nice up close and personal of each one of those and learn something new or share a common interest I just I think it just keeps it really centered around a storyline as well because otherwise I like I could just make the most randomest stuff and it would just get so out of hand so quickly anyway here they all are together they are just the sweetest things i really think that adding this glaze has made me like them a lot more because they just feel kooky weird cartoony but 
fun. I feel like I would see them in a TV show or in a cartoon book. Essentially being like a magic potion reacting in my big hot cauldron. So that was a really fun part of this week's video. And I hope you enjoyed seeing the different reactions, just sort of the soothing application of the glazes and my fun facts about pumpkins. If you've got any fun facts about pumpkins, please share them in the comments. I want to know so much more about pumpkins this week. It was so fascinating to read all this information about them. Thank you so much for watching another video this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always. And here is your sneak peek for the next reveal.